In the last episode, I put the body on the chassis, sorted the front suspension out, began collecting accessories, modified the front suspension for airbags, and mounted the engine and transmission. If you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, check those out, hit that subscribe button, and then head back over here. My goal with the fleet line is to lay on the frame. More specifically, to lay on the rocker panel. Even more specifically, lay on the rocker panel with the pinch weld removed. It doesn't get any lower than that, folks. Well, maybe it does. Anyways, to do this I will need to either do a body drop or modify the frame rail. You can see how much the frame rail sticks out under the rocker panel. I chose to take a section out of the frame instead of doing a body drop, as a body drop is a can of worms compared to modifying the frame. I used a laser level to determine how much of the frame I would need to chop off. I then used a straight edge and a tungsten scrap to mark the cut. At this time I also removed the spring perches and any mounting brackets from the 4x4 S10 rear axle I'm using. I put a rear fender on the body, then mounted a pair of wheels to the axle and shoved it up underneath the car. My goal here is to get the axle centered in the wheel well and perpendicular to the center line of the chassis. I again broke out the laser level to aid in this. This is a very, very important step and so I took care to measure everything multiple times. I then welded the actual axle tube to the frame on both sides. This was done so it would remain in place while I built the rear suspension links. Luckily I remembered to set the pinion angle before doing so. Next up I had some friends over and we removed the body from the frame. This will allow easier access to the frame rails for sectioning and rear suspension fabrication. I did a quick bit of brainstorming on the rear suspension before getting started on sectioning the frame. My plan of attack with the frame rails is to section one at a time. I started by cutting off the portion of the frame rail that I marked with the laser level. I then cleaned up the cut and area to be welded. I had already purchased cold rolled flat stock that matched the dimensions of the bottom of the frame. However, the frame was not straight but had an arc throughout the portion to be sectioned, and so I had to modify the flat stock to fit. I did this with my porta band by cutting the majority of the way through the stock and then welding it back up. This curved the piece to match the frame rails. After a quick cleanup, it was ready to weld to the frame. It turned out real nice, I think. I did have to cut the bottom part of one of the body mounts off and weld in another piece of flat stock to brace the mount. After modifying the frame, it was time to get on with the rear suspension. I'm using a universal four link kit to make a triangulated four link setup. I started by taking lots of measurements and making a few drawings and along with considerations such as roll center and the amount of floor pan that would need to be cut out for the upper triangulated links. I purchased and read Max Fish's Air Suspension Design Volume 1 and it has been extremely helpful throughout the process. I highly recommend it. First I sketched on my welding table to calculate the roll center and picture how the movement of the rear axle and suspension would be throughout the travel. Next I built a cross member out of some rectangle tubing that the lower links will mount to. Then I made some brackets to mount the non-adjustable side of the link on the cross member and tacked on the lower link brackets to the axle. You can see the pink string I am using to check the roll center. Next up I began working on designing the C-notches for the frame rails. These notches allow the axle the full range of motion required to lay the car on the ground. There are many considerations. You obviously need enough room for the axle when the car is aired all the way out, but you don't want too much room or it'll affect how much of the floor pan you have to cut away and even the rear seat may need to be modified to fit. Here you can see my calculations. As I have mentioned before, my tires are 24 and 7 8 inch tall, which I round up to 25 inches. So the center line of the axle needs to be able to move at least half of that, 12.5 inches, up from the frame rail so the car can lay out. That means the top of the notch needs to be a minimum of 13 and 3 quarter up from the bottom of the frame rail, since the axle tube is 2.5 inches in diameter. The bottom airbag mount on the axle is 2.5 inches tall, and the airbag I'm using is 3 inches fully compressed. So from the bottom of the frame I calculated that the top of the notch, which is where the upper bag mount will be welded to, should be 18.5 inches. I cut the C notches out of 8th inch cold rolled sheet 
we've all done that in place. After the C-notches were done, I headed down to QA1 to pick up a pair of heim joints or rod ends to use on the upper links. Since the links will be triangulated, the rod ends are needed as a bushing will wear out. This is because there will be some deflection throughout the travel of the system. First I sectioned into the frame for the outboard mounts. I did this so less of the floor pan would need to be trimmed out and the rear seat base would fit with less modification. Next up I use my calculations on roll center to figure out the height the inboard mounts on the axle needed to be relative to the outboard mounts. After this was finished I cut the welds I had made connecting the axle directly to the frame, removed it, and then went about welding all the brackets to the frame and axle, and cut the section of the frame between the C-notch. I put the axle back in and checked the range of motion and everything worked out exactly as planned. Thanks for watching episode 3 of the Manhattan Build Project. Please remember to subscribe so you can follow along as in the next episode, I'm going to be making a transmission cross member, adding a chassis brace, and modifying the front cross member. Thanks for watching. All fluff, baby. This is all